This is second reading R1. That's correct. Public hearing for an ordinance submitting to the eligible electors of the City of Pueblo, Colorado at the general municipal election to be held on November 7, 2017, a proposed amendment to the charter of the City of Pueblo and fixing the ballot title, therefore, introduced June 12, 2017, by Councilman Ed Brown. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Council, this is a hearing. Um, is there a staff report? Mr. President, members of Council, this ordinance refers uh, to the um, registered voters of Pueblo for the November 7th election, a proposed uh, charter revision which would change the form of government uh, from council manager to a strong mayor council. A similar measure uh, was referred to the voters in 2009. Under this proposal, if this ordinance passes, all executive powers of the city would be given to an elected mayor. The initial salary of the mayor would be $150,000 per year. Uh, if this passes, the first election uh, of, a, of a mayor would take place on November 6th, 2018. And because that is a special election, the initial term of the mayor would be for five years. Thereafter, uh, the mayor would be uh, elected every four years. Under this uh, ordinance, uh, the new mayor, uh, if this passes, would take office on January the 8th, 2019. Oh, okay. This ordinance, if it passes, also gives City Council uh, the authority to hire personnel necessary to enable the Council to adequately perform its duties and the council could make uh, those hiring decisions independent of the mayor. I am available to uh, answer any questions. I would like to publicly thank uh, Nick Radisar uh, for working uh, with me to get this uh, ballot uh, issue ready to present uh, to the voters. Uh, there are 21 pages of changes to the current city charter. And so uh, Nick was kind enough to uh, work with me to, to get them in a fashion that I think is fair uh, and that uh, is supported by this committee, which uh, uh, wishes to campaign for this ballot question. Uh, if you put it on the ballot, uh, it will be item 2B um, on the it's November 7th ballot. And that concludes my report. Bob Kagovsek. Yes. Lying through his teeth. Councilman Nichol, did you have a question? Sam Azad was right yes, next I to did. him, staring um, at him like I wanted to ask about there was another group that had been a Discussing let's, other let's, options. Let's, let's wait for that, if you don't mind. Okay. We, Chris uh, Nichols said, I got, I want to speak, and, and then uh, Naraki was like, so shut the fuck up. And Chris, oh, okay. okay. So, sorry. All right. No, I, okay. I'll do it. I'm okay. sorry. All right. Thank you. All right, Council, this is a hearing. Anyone else wishing to speak on behalf of this ordinance? And we're going to let anybody it to but three City Council. Per anybody but so, City Council. Welcome, and uh, we be sworn in. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you shall give before Guess the public city council will be the, the first speaker. truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Please state your name for the record. Nick Gratisar. Thank you. Uh, members of the council, it's a pleasure to come before you this evening. Uh, we've had an opportunity to talk about this proposal uh, a couple of times with you. Um, with me tonight are some members of the committee organized to elect the mayor who are still here that uh, have been active in this effort for the last 18 months. I think we've explained to you that we've been talking about this and so we simply want to urge you to support this proposal for a strong elected mayor uh, for the community of Pueblo. 
Um, you know, the discussion in the community with the people we talk to, people believe that we need a mayor. And the question is, I believe, are we going to do it the right way or are we going to do it the wrong way? The wrong way. Uh, this, I think, is the right way. No, it's the wrong this way. This provides for Who full time leadership you? and accountability. Someone who will be the face of this community in Denver, uh, in Colorado Springs, um, and in the United States. This is the kind of system that this committee believes that Pueblo deserves. This is not 1954 when we adopted this council manager former government. This is not a simple world we live in today. It's much more complicated and we need a different kind of leadership <laughs> than the one that's provided for in the council manager former Stupid government. Stupid arguments. Whatever problems you believe are important for this community to address, whether it's crime, drugs, gangs, Mayor's animals, gonna fix it all. shelters, uh, are going to be better addressed by having an elected mayor Big who's Daddy been Strain, uh, anointed by the citizens of this community to deal with those problems than the current system of government. <laughs> Idyllic memories of days of yesteryear in neighboring communities uh, and how they were led is not a vision for the future in the opinion of this committee. This proposal allows the community to put someone in charge and to hold them accountable. You? It gives Pueblo the former government Your son? and the kind of leadership that Pueblo deserves, and we urge you to support this. Thank you. All right, thank you for your testimony. Anybody else wishing to speak on behalf of this ordinance? That was it? Seeing none, that anyone wishing minute, to speak against this ordinance? That one minute testimony. He's doing it quick. No Seeing Rockies. none, the hearing is closed. Nope, oh, it's closed. Open, closed. All right, motion made and second. Uh, any discussion? Councilman Nickel. Thank you. So um, my question, I guess, for staff is, has anybody come for, forward with other concepts for the mayor system of government, whether it be a weak mayor or a strong mayor? There is uh, a concept of facilitative mayor that Facil will be presented to you on, on uh, July 10th council meeting. So I guess my question is, is as a council body, we've talked about putting this on the ballot so the voters can decide this matter as a charter amendment, a charter change. Um, if another group comes forward and wants to bring forward a mayor proposal, whether it be a, this type or another type. Any group? Uh, what about an individual? Will the council put that item on the ballot as well? Will there be two, two competing items on there and the, and the public will sort it out? Or does the, what's the right approach here, I guess? Because when we first start talking about this, that concept hadn't been talked about. And I just think it bears discussion. I've supported this idea in the past, but I think it, we, we have to be fair in how we approach this because it is an important uh, part of our, sisti our city's... Uh, the one opposition sisti voice supported it in the past. Yeah, yeah Councilman Aguilar. Well, I personally think that we got to do for one group like we have to do for the other group. Uh, Nick, I know, I know you're opposed to any opposition, but <clears throat> what the, what, don't the other group have rights? You know, <laughs> is he I mean, asking Everybody them? has an equal right. And if there's even another form, I think we need to accept whoever uh, brings a uh, form and we, uh, either that or put it out so you guys have to go out and have signatures. <clears throat> but You can just do it yourselves. That's what I'm saying. Five of seven. Gotta, we got to treat everybody equally. If you treat, if, if one group gets on without any have, going out and having signatures, then the other group needs to do the same thing. What's your so ideas for a new government, that's, Aguilar? That's what, I, that's what I'm seeing Ray. things from. Hey, Ray. What's, you got any ideas for a brand new thank government? You. All right, thank you, Councilman Aguilar. Any other comments? No, okay. Yeah. Councilman. Just trying to jam it through. Um, no Rockies trying to jam it. It's my understanding it. that the week mayor is just basically changing the president of city council's title from president to, to mayor, so there's really not <laughs> much of a change there. Um, there's two things that people really dislike, and that's the way things are and change. And um, I certainly think that Pueblo needs to change, and uh, I'm going to support this ballot initiative. Ah, uh, boo! Councilman Brown. It's like they don't know the charter, they don't know the laws. Uh, you know, this... Uh, Ed Brown introduced it. Vacuum. It was uh, bipartisan, and uh, Nick said it had been working for 18 months. So uh, I just support. I support this. Uh, 
motion. I just support it. I just support it. Thank you, Councilman Brown. Any other comments? <laughs> Councilman Tensio. Yeah, I'm going to support this uh, ordinance also. And if another group comes forward and wants to put something on the initiative, I think we should treat everybody equally. All it'll do is uh, make whatever groups work that much harder to achieve their goals. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's called democracy. So uh, I'm, I'm in favor of this for now. Let's see what happens with another group and see what they've come forward with. I'm not going to blanket say yes. I'll, I have to hear what they have to say first. But uh, I don't see anything wrong with it. I support this one. Any other comments? Councilman Sean. I agree with everybody that this is a free country. I, I think we have to be real careful because if if a hundred people want to put something on the ballot, Ray, what are we going to do? And <laughs> put a, then we'll confuse the heck out of everybody and nobody will vote for anything. So I think a hundred I, things. I'm, with Larry, I don't, I'm not agreeing to a blanket thing because I think there's a huge pitfall in that. <laughs> every one of you here and ten of your friends and all bring something and we're going to put it on the ballot. We're going to paralyze government. And that makes no sense to me. Thank you. So any they're all against comments? any other ideas. They're all in favor of this shit. Bob Kagovsek is the one that presented it. He presented it. He reported it. And then he's going to act like he had nothing to do with it. of the city charter uh, had an answer back in 1954. Mm. And what the charter says is that uh, whoever gets the most votes wins. So if strong mayor... Uh, gets more votes than the facilitative uh, mayor, then the strong mayor would <laughs> win. Facilitative. Uh, and vice versa. He made it sound so stupid. Is that what so the charter says? So like add a little bit more to this here. That, uh, so actually we potentially could have three choices. Or you could have four, I guess. But, you could uh, have unlimited choices, you stupid choices fucker. Things the way they are. But if you have two ballot initiatives on, one is the facilitated mayor and the other is a strong mayor, uh, if one of those wins, uh, there wasn't an option for... Uh, I mean, let's just roll dice. Somebody, has Fuck to it. Win. Let's, somebody flip a two. coin. Will somebody Unless just flip a coin? Vote. So automatically, by default, one of those would win and we <laughs> would be out. So I'm almost questioning... No? You said no, Councilman Brown? If one of those, if we have two on the ballot, and I assume they both say that if they win, that they would take the place of the existing government. Well, that's that's well, right. If they pass, if right. they pass, yeah, it's possible that both could lose. It's possible yeah. if both win. Okay, explain uh, me how gets the most uh, votes uh, it Ex wins. Explain me how they could both lose. Does both people vote no? Okay, but what happens for those that have more yes votes than the other one? Isn't that a winner? Yes, if they get if they get uh, 50 yes, but not a no vote. vote. Steve, it's a dumb question. So they have to have fifty percent plus one. Okay. If <laughs> so, it's possible. Okay. I mean, in two thousand and nine, uh, thirty-two percent voted for a strong mayor. Right. Sixty-eight percent voted no. <clears throat> Councilman Nickel, thank you, Councilman. Thank you, Mr. President. And I and I bring this up because. It, with the other group coming to present in the future, I don't want it to seem like we didn't consider this and we didn't talk about Maybe it. Maybe so y'all should have read the damn charter. The you're not allowed to do any of this. This is all illegal. You're all breaking the laws because you're all a bunch of fucking and criminals. And it to us and we decide to, we vote on that and decide to add it. We Chris can, Nichols has given the illusion uh, of fairness. Not, we have one group and we have another group. On this tonight, even though they haven't come Chris Nichols, did you want to change the government? How would you have changed the government? I bet you would have had different ideas than what was shoved into this. But I just wanted to make sure that we had. But it does uh, seem like they're all in tandem. They're all working about, together. Uh, both Bob Kagovset gives a report okay, well, immediately. Again, Nick Gardasar comes counter, up. Thank you for explaining that because I think it's important. Everybody I've had people was in favor of it. No opposition, not one opposing voice. Another group considering, and there are some. They just give lip service to some other group, uh, whoever that could be. Government we have right now. But no individuals, so, just groups. Uh, I think it's important, and of course, as this evolves, we'll have to have They're more taking a long time, but they already the public, decided this the shit. They probably were emailing, you know, behind closed staff, doors. City attorney to move this forward. And they already, the they already figured this shit out tonight. earlier. So, 
there's no other discussion, I would Let's just go here and get just pass this. Action. Let's just pass this shit. Nobody opposed it. He pushed it hard. It unanimous. 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 All right, Madam Clerk. Steve Noel Rocky led the charge. Bob Kagopsek. The fiscal year 2017 staffing ordinance by changing the title of a position within the sales tax division of the finance department. Introduced June 12, 2017 by Councilman Ed Brown. Ed Brown also introduced the other thing, June 12th. Man, Ed Brown introduced a lot of this shit on June 12th. This is June 26, 2017. That was the public hearing. That was the discussion behind putting the illegal, unconstitutional ballot question 2A. It eventually became question 2A, 2B was the police. So most of that was, you know, pretty accurate. That was exactly what we saw on the ballot. The exact, let's see, the public hearing, they read it all. So I thought that that was historically important. It's also important for... Uh, my case, which is essentially that was a crime. What they did there, what you just now heard, was a crime. Section 1-2 of Pueblo City's 1954 Charter, for those who believe in constitutional law and the rule of law, for those who believe in, you know, being lawful and being legal and listening to the rules, the Charter, which is protected by Colorado's Constitution and the U.S. Constitution, dictates that we have a city manager form of government a council manager is what they called it council manager unless we have a city charter unless by the majority of the electors for a city charter so that means the majority of the people have to vote for the charter that is constructed at a charter convention but there was no charter convention they didn't go through the charter convention they didn't even think about going through the charter convention they went along with Nick Gardasar, a Democrat, the five Democratic Council. Bob Schilling was the Republican, so even the opposition, and there was zero opposition. This is a very this is a Pedco corporatist runaway government. And they're not listening to the charter. Bob Kagovsek is the city lawyer. It would be on him if anybody sues anybody in the city, it goes to Bob Kagovsek's office. So I hope he doesn't take any of this personal, but it's his office, right? So I'm suing the entire city council's decision for putting ballot question 2A even on the ballot. It's illegal. It's like, hey, let's, uh, you want to start building some concentration camps and throwing the Jews into these concentration camps? Could you write that ballot question up? Is ballot question, can you just write anything that your little old mind can construct or imagine? Can you just put it on, and even if it goes against our inherent, you know, democracy, let's just destroy democracy. Let's just dissolve the judicial branch. Let's just dissolve the 10th judicial branch, you're right? Let's just have executive and legislative. We don't need to. Can we do that? Can we ban free speech? Can we ban the Second Amendment? Can we ban the Third, Fourth, Fifth, Sixth Amendment? Can we? No. I, th I say no. My opinion is you cannot put something on the ballot that's already on the face illegal. You want to change the government? You got to do it by a charter convention. So B Bob Kagovsek, his quote was 100% wrong. His quote couldn't have been further from the truth. He said that the charter was very specific when it comes to who wins the ballot measure. It's the one that has the most yes votes. And so I guess if there's two competing or two similar things, but what the fuck? What page are you on, Bob? Is that, you know, he quotes in his re response or his answer, whatever, whichever one that is. He responds, check out sections 318 and 319. <laughs> so he gets into the weeds when it comes to, you know, like page 100. But the third sentence, the third sentence at the top of the page, at the top of the charter, you can't change this government unless you have a charter convention. You can't change the city manager unless you have a charter convention. You can't change all three branches of government. And he mentioned that it was 21 pages. So I thought it was just like 10 pages. I forget, I counted it before. And then I counted the words in the thing. And then I counted each one of the changes. So 70 different changes into this charter. So it's a skinny charter. They changed the form of government. They were honest about that. But that's the thing is they said that this is to change the form of government. And then section 1-2 says if you want to change the form of government, you must have a charter convention. So ballot question 2A says, hey, you want to try change 
the government? Well, you can do it just by voting yes. No charter conventions. How's that sound? Illegal? Unconstitutional? Does it sound like we didn't listen to our own 1954 charter and we have no idea what the fuck we're doing? Yes. So, I hate to put it on, you know, city council like that. It's one issue. I'm sure they're nice people and they, I don't, I don't know. I wish I felt included in whatever fucking circles or groups that they're in. And it feels very much like, who are you? What are you about? And that's, uh, you know, are you rich and powerful? Should I kiss your ass? Or are you just some fucking impoverished, you know, working class, average, you know, Joe Six Plane? So, yeah, that was, that was a fucking crime right there. They did it really quick. It was only in the span of, what, 10 minutes or so? He, right, Bob, or Dan Kagovsek went ahead and give the report one, two minutes and then uh, Sam has had briefly, not not in order. This, okay, so Dan Kagovsek, and then after that, Nick Gardasar, Nick, uh, Chris Nickel interjected for a moment, but then Nick Gardasar was the man. He was the man of the hour. He was the one giving the presentation, the bullshit show trial. Nick, you got to say something in front of us. We already agreed to it. We already like what you're doing here. We've been talking to you. We're a bunch of Democrats. You're a Democrat. We're all Democrats. Ed Brown said it was it didn't come out of a vacuum. It was a bipartisan decision. So I'm not going to put it just on the Democrats, because, but I'm putting it on the Democratic City Council. Five of the seven are Democrats. So the Democratic Council, if you want the Demo this is the problem with the fucking Democrats. Republicans are shitty because they're for the war. They're for the rich. They don't give a shit about anybody else but their own pocketbook. Democrats act like Republicans too goddamn much. The Democrats are the ones that's supposed to give a shit. They're the ones that have a heart. They're the ones that care too much. They're bleeding heart liberals. They're tree huggers. They allow their hearts to go maybe farther than what their brains would allow them to do. So when it comes to money, yeah, you want to take care of everybody, but you don't have enough. So you got to have heart. You got to care, but then you also got to stay within your means. So you need some brain too. So we need both, you know, the stereotypical Republican and the Democrat. The problem with the Democrats is when they start bombing Libya, when they start toppling governments, when they overthrow Honduras, when they're in Ukraine, when they're expanding the empire, when they're bombing Kosovo, when they're the ones who's doing the criminal illegal acts, the warfare, the lobbyists, the 1%, the border wall, the war on drugs, what the fuck ever it is, because they're not true blue progressives, because they don't wear their progressive heart on their sleeve. They are fake Republicans who are just as bad, just as crooked, just as corporatist, just as, you know, war monk. What the, what the fuck is the difference? We have two, we have one major party. We have one party business class. So it's, we got two, one big business, big war, big pharmaceutical, big, you know, fracking. It all comes down to the economics, really. William Jennings Bryan, he said the rich said that they'll make a ton of money if they just do as the fuck as they want. That's Republicans. Democrats think that if you let the people make a bunch of money, then that'll help all the other adjacent social classes. And so that's essentially saying it's all for the rich, right? <laughs> but the Democrats are saying if you give more money to the poor and the working classes, they'll have more money to spend, more money to shop, and then therefore the capitalists will make money too. So, it's a Democratic Council. They're going to do illegal shit. Democrats, Democrats, listen to me. I am a progressive. I am liberal. I am a lefty. The Democrats are the lesser of the two evils. Fuck the Republicans. They're not even a part of my psyche. I don't even, there's, you got the conservative Democrats and you got the progressive Democrats. That's where the heart of the discussion is. For me, I have no idea what the fuck the Republicans are even, they're, you know, they're off the fucking charts. Democrats need to stop bombing people in Kosovo and Honduras and Libya. Need to stop toppling governments. Need to stop drone striking and killing innocent civilians. And we need to do things lawfully. We need to stop police brutality. We need to go after poverty. We need to go after the homelessness. We need to stop these things. These are problems that we could stop. So, 
That's what we need to do. And as Democrats, we need to do this lawfully. So you want to change the form of government? Go ahead, Pueblo. I'm all in favor of change. I'm a revolutionary. Even once the revolution happens, I want, you know, well, you can always make things better, right? You can always improve even things that are working, you know, squeaky clean. Everything's perfect, tip top shape. You can still make it better. So, I'm in favor of change. I'm in favor of popularly elected mayor. Let's get a fucking mayor anyways. We could have a charter convention and still make the, you know, the mayor of the goddamn chief executive. But with the charter convention, we're getting more people involved. We're getting 21 different delegates, so we get more ideas. Even everybody on city council. Did everybody on city council get their ideas injected into this brand new form of government? No, they're going with Nick Gardasar. They like Nick Gardasar, whatever his fucking persona, his allure, whatever it is, his magic, the magic of Nick Gardasar. You know, once Noraki was on board, once Bob Kagavsek, he might just say he was just given a report. He was ordered by the court, the council, to give a report. So he was just doing his job. He was just, you know, uh, just doing a, a report. <laughs> I, I was neutral. I was just reading it. But you could tell he said he worked with Nick Gardasar to make this presentable and then it didn't seem like he was against it he kind of mocked the other form of government because there was a so-called weak mayor group the facilitator mayor so there was a facilitator mayor group and he kind of laughed about like smirking you know like a well you know we got the strong mayor but if you want a strong and a facilitator kind of mayor well Charter's real clear about that. The one who's got the highest number of win votes. So, yeah, that, that crime happened on June 26, 2017. It didn't look like there was many people in the gallery. And the beginning stuff, actually, the perfunctory shit, seemed like it just went on and on and on. And this is a two-hour and 21, 21 minute meeting. So, June 26, 2017, 7 p.m. they started. for So, from... I guess the crime happened <laughs> when they voted, right? That was the moment the crime happened. The unanimous vote. Steve Noraki pushed for it. Everybody voted for it. Nobody voiced any op opposition. Chris Nickel gives some lip service to perhaps if there's some <laughs> opposition out there in a void. Who's out there? Anybody out there? Anybody oppose what we're doing here? So if the Democrats want to be the moral and principled and the party that actually gives a shit about other people, if they want to be, you know, be ble there's nothing wrong with giving a shit about. There's nothing wrong with caring about people. And so I truly believe that if the Democrats want to get, you know, on the same fucking page, then the Democrats should do this thing the right way. You want to change the government, then change it the correct way. Change it the right way. Right now, you got a criminal runaway. It's going to be, right now, it's a criminal government, and it's going to run away. It's going to run away with the, made. you're making major fucking changes. And you didn't do it by the state. You didn't do a charter commission. You didn't do a charter convention. You did it just by mere ballot measure. So, if I put on the ballot measure, and the lawyer was there, and I'm the city council, and the lawyer read out my thing, and then I'm sitting there saying, you know what, let's build these concentration camps for the Jews. We need concentration camps. Because these damn Jews are out of control. We need to throw every single Jewish person, right? There's a religious thing there. There's a capital, I mean, money, where's this money, <laughs> money going to come from? And, uh, and then a moral thing, and a principled thing, and then a constitutional thing. So there's a lot of shit that would go on in a question such as that. Governments have done that, so it's just a crazy notion that if they put a wild, crazy, illegal thing on the ballot, and let's say the people voted for it, barely, 52% to 48% out of the 34% that was the total turnout, so 52%, 52% of 35%, 34%, so 18%, so 18% of the people who did vote, you got the plurality, not a majority, just 18% of the public wanted this strong mayor thing. And so just 18% voted by mere ballot measure to make 70 different changes, 70 different amendments, 21 worth of pages, 21 pages worth of changes without a charter convention, without a charter commission, without any kind of fucking charter get together, rewrite, none of that. It was Chamber of Commerce. So this strong mayor is very much a chamber of commerce. This is corporatist. They also loved Pedco. Aguilera just 
couldn't get himself enough of Pedco. So, now you know.